Keith Pitt, is part of the problem here, they talk about this being the lowest cost pathway. Now, of course, by pathway, they mean the pathway to net zero. So uh, electricity is always going to be expensive while ever we're on that path, is it not? The issue is net zero. We should scrap it. Well, the lowest cost pathway to the cheapest and most reliable electricity is coal. <laughs> it absolutely is. Uh, and yet we've got industry across this country that are offsetting their carbon emissions so they can maintain uh, the systems and uh, industry that they have in place. Uh, and yet the, the coal network gets completely denigrated uh, by people like Chris Bowen and others. And yet it is the most affordable, most reliable mechanism to generate electricity in this country. Now, if you want it to be zero emissions, well, the next one up the list is, is nuclear. Right? It's that easy. Labor is trying to say to the Australian people that they can build a network that is unreliable, intermittent, uh, and then have to build another network that's 100% reliable, put the two together, and somehow that's cheaper than just building the most reliable one. Well, I don't think the Australian people will be fooled, and Mr Westerman has belled the cat. Yeah, I don't think the Australian public are fooled at all. They get reminded every time they get their power bill. Speaking of the government's green energy agenda, reports in The Australian today that Queensland is on track to miss its legislated renewable and emissions reduction targets because uh, two of their pumped hydro projects, which they're relying upon, are behind schedule. Well, why are they behind schedule, you ask? Well, uh, they're yet to secure environmental approvals, ironically, and they're facing multi-billion dollar cost blowouts. Keith, Andrew Bolt has been right across this issue. But, to I mean, the government's green dream is now completely broken, is it not? And I might add, isn't it ironic that the argument against nuclear is it takes too long and uh, it costs too much, and yet here we are with these renewable projects behind schedule and blowing out in costs? But they will never be delivered. I look at what's been committed to in, in Queensland, and it's ludicrous. And you've only got to look at the local dam that I've got here, Paradise Dam, biggest infrastructure failure in our country's history, and yet it'll live, it's just not going to be repaired. They want to apply all of the current rules, replace that dam wall with one which is about you know, 40 or 50 metres in front of the existing one, have it be the same size, and yet it's got to go through every single approval again. That is something that should be fast-tracked. Uh, there is considerable safety risk with it, and yet we don't see anyone who wants to do that. That They fast-track to, to knock that wall down. We should fast-track to put it back. It's the same footprint. And the idea that they'll build pumped hydro all over this country and get environmental and heritage approvals, it's ludicrous. It'll never be done. Nuclear small footprint, and it works. Michael, I uh, want to ask you about the latest warning from the IMF that Australia runs the risk of high inflation continuing on into 2025. In fact, uh, our inflation is on track to exceed all advanced economies except Slovakia. So I guess that's a feather in the government's cap. We're doing better than Slovakia. That's fantastic news. High inflation means, of course, interest rates won't be cut anytime soon, something we are seeing happen in other countries. How much blame do Anthony Albanese and Jim Chalmers bear for this? Surely their excuse that, well, this is a worldwide global issue, it doesn't cut the mustard anymore. No, absolutely not. It doesn't cut the mustard at all because this was designed this way. Remember, Australia is an outlier. Uh, every other country uh, went hard on inflation. And in fact, their real interest rates uh, are still in many cases higher than Australia's. Uh, we chose, and the Treasurer was involved in this, um, to have a pathway that um, was mindful of unemployment. And, you know, that's a, a laudable thing to do, but it does mean that we're going to get a death by a thousand cuts. Uh, the IMF forecast is not really the important one. The important one's the RBA's forecast. They're not forecasting returning the ban till the end of 25. Um, those last unemployment um, figures, um, you know, have changed everybody's uh, outlook in terms of when we're likely to get an interest rate cut. And this is all by design. Um, you know, the, the government owns this. Yeah, I can't argue with that. They absolutely own it and uh, they'll own it at the next ballot box. Keith, uh, I spoke yesterday with your fellow Senator Matt Canavan about how disappointing it was to see King Charles weigh in on the climate change debate. Uh, he should just stay away from domestic policy issues. Uh, King Charles said we should be relying on wind and solar, but failed to mention some of our other key resources like gas, uh, not to mention nuclear. 
Uh, the King left Australia today to preside over the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Samoa, where climate change, no doubt, will be top of the agenda. And we all know how this is going to go, right? Pacific Island nations will demand Australia reduce fossil fuel use and uh, pay money for the damage we've done to the weather. Well, I think that's a pretty fair summary. I, I mean, King Charles is entitled to his view, as I'm entitled to mine, and I'm pleased he's not designing Australia's networks for electricity generation and distribution. But there's some fundamentals here. We, we have 30% of the world's uranium supplies. Let's use them. Uh, we, we produce over a, well, close to $100 billion worth of coal exports a year that props up our economy and helps to build hospitals and roads and schools and employ 300,000 people. And that's great, and we should keep doing that. Uh, and, you know, the, the monarch will always have a view, and uh, I'm a monarchist, I'm a supporter, but the reality is we've got to act in Australia's interest. Now, the Pacific will continue to do what they've always done. Uh, there, there'll be support for them, clearly. But the idea that we should abandon Australia's resources sector and the more than one million Australians who work in it, that is fraught with danger. It'll be the wrong decision, and I'll be interested to see how federal Labor wanders through this one. Keith Pitt, Michael Costa, appreciate your time tonight.